Well, hello there. <laughs> what? Oh, right. Welcome back to Arcanum of Steamworks and Magicka Obscure. It is hot here. It is incredibly hot here. It's... We're at the middle of a heat wave here in the UK at the time of recording this. It is uncomfortable. Really uncomfortable. I don't do heat very well. No, that's incorrect. I don't do humidity too well. Dry heat is perfect. I'm okay with dry heat. Perfectly okay with that, but this this kind of weather where you're practically swimming in it, it's really awful. I really hate it. And it really makes me quite uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> so I've got my window open, so unfortunately, because I live near a main road, I will hear the occasional bit of traffic, I've got my fan on, the dehumidifier's on, I've already emptied that three times today. The problem with living in England is that a majority of the old houses, and practically any town you go to, are designed to keep heat in. We're not exactly a very warm country here. And because of that, uh... Because our houses are typically designed to keep heat in, it, it makes it really uncomfortable. My computer, though, is cooler than I am, which is hilarious. But, um, anyway, I digress. Following the last episode, we had a talk to the Silver Lady. Uh, quite um, an interesting bit of dialogue, honestly. I wholly recommend you have a watch of it. It was enlightening, if not confusing and cryptic, and incredibly vague. But Raven is on hand to help us dissect it a little bit. Hello again. It's so very good to see you. Hello, Raven. Do you have a moment to speak? Certainly. How can I help you? I spoke with your mother about what's happened. And what did you ask her about? I asked her about the... <laughs> I asked her about the Black Mountain Clan. Are you okay? You seem to have stuttered. Yes, I'm alright. Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? She saw ravens and lightning and a violent storm. Ravens and a storm? And why did the storm subside and then rage once again? Nothing in my mother's visions is ever what it seems. We'll have to think on this. No, I never really understood any of this bit. I'm just going to assume this is my own interpretation of it. Maybe the wiki has it covered, I'll have to have a look myself, but uh, my guess is is that it happened in the past, this first storm happened, and then subsided for a time, and now it's happening again. Can't say anything about the ravens, but whatever. Uh, visions. Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? The BMC with a small machine-like child. As you told her, this must have been the man you know as Gilbert Bates. She saw him because he plays such a large role in their fate. This is true. At least beginning the whole thing, anyway. Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? Gilbert Bates plays a particular part in it at the beginning, where the Black Mountain Clan was found guilty of something. And I can't remember exactly what. It was covered in Love, Shape, and Stone. But... They were found guilty and exiled. And, uh... Bates was involved in that, and re probably the reason why that happened. A flame that consumed a wheat field and a pool of water. I'm not sure what that represents, but I know that fire in her visions often represents magic. And the water you say quenched it? Or did the flame burn itself out? I don't... I don't know. <laughs> Black Mountain Clan. What did she I have no see? idea. I have no idea on that one. A flame that consumed a wheat field and a pool of water. Magic running rampant, and then getting stopped by technology, maybe. A dark place with a dark fire and a mirrored plane. There are two separate visions. The flame again represents magic, but twisted somehow, burning darkly. And did you say that the Black Mountain Clan was near this flame? The mirrored plane, a white sky, a lone figure. The worlds like on mirror. either side of that mirror are the same. Who could say which one is real? Odd. 
She also had visions of Min Garad. Min Garad? What did she see? An eyeless man in pain, carving a key, and a wolf with a raised paw. What the screaming man and his key represent, I have no idea. But I do know that the official symbol for the city of Caledon is a wolf, with one paw raised in the air. Perhaps we need to begin our search there, Raven. I'm not so sure. Remember, my mother's visions are shackled by neither our eyes nor our time. The events she describes might be in either the future or the past. Let's look at all she said before we go any further. Okay, uh... Min Garad, what did she see? A torn curtain, a ringed broken finger pointing east. There's something about that entire vision which pulls at my memory, especially the ring. I'll think about it further. Min Garad, a torn what did she curtain. see? A ringed broken finger pointing east. Is this a Fellowship of the Ring reference? A hand that sees, but is blind. A truthful man in a mask. I have no idea. <laughs> Wait, that sounds like the symbol of the Namlet I've seen. Interesting. That's the ancient symbol of the Malokian Hand. Do you know of it? Yes, I know they were an order, an ancient order of assassins. The Malokian Hand were assassins for what used to be known as the Darian Ka, the ancient order of the dead. I already knew a little bit of the Darien Ka from Torian Kel back in the ancient temple, but let's find out a bit more. The Darien Ka were a shadowy group who formed during the Age of Legends. Their membership and their agenda were always very secret. I know little about them beyond the most cursory knowledge, but there have always been rumors about who they were and what they were doing. And the connection to the Malokian Hand? As I said, the Malokian Hand were their assassins. From what I remember of what was written about them, the Hand was ejected from the Order of the Dead on grounds of doctrinal differences. Eesh. There was a small struggle, and then the Hand disappeared. There are always rumors of its re-emergence, but from what I know, that's all they are. Uh, these rumors. amulets and... Sorry, I didn't know she thought she was finished. And these, am these amulets and the attempts at my life might say different. I agree. But I don't know why they would be involved in this business. Very interesting. What do you think the vision itself means? I don't really know. Although it would seem that perhaps they are being misled. Blindness in my mother's visions is sometimes associated with deception. As far as the man in the mask was draped in truth, I have no idea. Hmm. Draped. I have... I... I understand this one because we can actually... do something about that. Much later on, but... I don't get the mask in and draped in truth. Mm. Min Garad, what did she see? Maybe the person in the mask misled them, but they knew the truth. I don't know. Lost hiding children, a man runs from them, dropping leaves. This one is the most interesting of all, and it seems that my fears may have well been correct. Why, Raven? What do you think it means? Do you remember when I told you that the name of Min Garad bothered me in some way? Well, I believe that may have been so because Min Garad is a dark name. Okay. What does that mean? A dark name? A dark elf name. Do you know of the dark elves? Have you heard of the high elves? Uh, I've heard very little of them. Could you elaborate? It's a long story. But sometime during the Age of Legends, many years even before my mother was born, there were a group of elves who separated themselves. There were philosophical differences, and they were no longer welcome in our forests. Those elves became what we know as the Dark Elves. What is the Age of Legends? The Age of Legends refers to a time in Arcanum's history when things were much different than they are now. There was an elven council that ruled over all of the races, and magic was a large part of everyone's lives. It was a time of heroes and great good, and also of great evil. A time before the rise of technology, before the dwarven clan wars, before the mages left for Tula. I see. And the differences between you and the Dark Elves? They believe that this world and all of its races are subject to elven rule. They believe that elves are superior because of our close connection to nature our power in the ways of magic, and the longevity of our physical form. They see the other races as bumbling children who need our guidance, regardless of its severity. 
And you? What do you believe? I believe. Well, let us say that I don't always see eye to eye with those in Kantara concerning the rightful place of the Dark Elves. My role here is as protector. I will do so regardless of the cost. What do the Elves here believe? The Elves of Kantara, in fact all other Elves, believe that everything and everyone has a rightful place in the experience which forms this reality. Elves feel that very little, if anything, ever happens that isn't part of the natural progression of that state. Huh. They feel no superiority because of their advantages. That is just the role they have been picked to play. Do they see the Dark Elves as a violation of that order? Unfortunately not. The Dark Elves are seen in the same light as everyone else. They have the role and they are playing it. You say unfortunately. What do you believe, Raven? I believe. Well, let us say that I don't okay, always just see the same eye thing eye again. I thought I was getting somewhere with that. The rightful place of the Dark Elves. My role here is as protector. I will do so regardless of the cost. Oh, yes, well, I see. Let's get back. Uh, let's get back to your mother's vision. My mother's vision of the lost children was referring, I believe, to the Dark Elves. Okay. They were hidden from her because they are hidden from all of us. Through magic and isolation, we've not seen where they live for almost five hundred years. Who was the man running from them? There was a man many years ago who had come to the Glimmering Forest to study the Elves. And I remember that he was very interested in the Dark Elves especially. There were rumors about his capture by them and an escape. Who was he? As I said, he was a researcher. A strange little man, a bit overdressed, but kind-hearted and very intelligent. I was young then, a mere 160 years old. A mere 160? He was the first human I'd ever seen. She smiles slightly. Do you remember his name? His name? It was a long time ago. But I remember because he said it so often. I think humans just like hearing the sound of their own names. Hmm. <laughs> Terwilliger. Dr. Renford A. Terwilliger. I can hear him saying it even now. <laughs> what were the leaves he was dropping? I believe that's pages. and Pages from a book. I don't know. It almost seemed in the vision that the flock who consumed him were more interested in the leaves. And my mother even said to find what was left behind, these leaves might very well be what we're looking for. What is a place of smoke and water? She could mean almost anywhere. But if I were to make a guess, I'd say she was talking about the human city of Tarant. It lies in the Gulf of Morbihan, and its, what do you call them, factories, are always belching smoke into the skies. That and, I know that Terwilliger was from there. Why does she wink and smile slyly? Hmm. Well, what now? You have a place to begin your search, my friend. It would seem that if you need to find this Mingarod, you're going to need to find the village of the Dark Elves. Mm -hmm. The only person who might know where they are is Renford A. Terwilliger. He may or may not be in Tarant, but it's a good place to start looking. Considering this was probably a long time ago, I doubt he's alive. Then I'll find the Dark Elves. To Tarant I shall go. You impress me, my friend. Few are those like you who would take this burden upon themselves. You've earned my respect. What could we say here? Could you mind letting me go of my hand? <laughs> Fucking hell. <sighs> Your respect makes it all the more worth it. Return to me when you found the Dark Elves, and she tell blushes. me what you uncover. We will have much to discuss. Yeah, I'm sure. Alright. I'll return when I know more, Raven. Goodbye for now. Well, that was... Enlightening, to say the least. Now that actually took a lot longer than I expected. It was mostly just dialogue, but an important piece of dialogue. Deciphering the whole um, set of visions we got from the Silver Lady is uh, important. We now have a new place, well, an old place to go look for more information. Tarant. Finding Renford A. Terwilliger. That's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Probably the best place to start for that one is to haul the records. If anyone will know where he is, that will be the place. But first, we have things to do in Quintara. There's actually a few interesting little tidbits here to do. But for now, I'm going to stop there because I really didn't think this would take that long, but it has. It happens. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Toodles!